Generation 1 Transformer Review, Decepticon Rat Bat. Before we get into the review of the actual action figure itself, let's take a look at Rat Bat's tech spec. Function, Fuel Scout. Quote, the road is my dinner plate. Rat Bat has no friends, only business partners, because his only allegiance is to himself. He refuels by plunging his mecha fangs into new car's gas lines, and the better made the car, the better the gasoline tastes. His maximum flying speed is 65 miles per hour. Ratbat carries two radar-guided, free electron lasers that detect the presence of an object as small as a fly. His wings contain mechanical sensors for locating fuel sources. He has a one-foot wingspan that can enlarge to 10 feet. Ratbat's wings are vulnerable to artillery. Ratbat is rated a 3 in strength, a 9 in intelligence, a 4 in speed, a 3 in endurance, a 6 in rank, a 7 in courage, a 2 in firepower, and a 9 in skill. This gives Ratbat an overall rating of 5.4. Okay, now it's time for the official review of the Generation 1 Ratbat action figure. Before we get started, let's take a look at what you get when you purchase a Generation 1 Ratbat. Well, he came in a double pack of Decepticon cassettes, and you see he was packaged on the left. There's a picture of Ratbat, Decepticon Ratbat. On the back, it has the four steps on how to transform Ratbat from cassette mode into bat form. It has his tech spec, and he was worth one transformer point. All right, let's put the box back. All right, now I'm going to first zoom in to Ratbat. And you see he does look like the Generation 1 cartoon. It's a nice looking piece. And you'll notice he has two ears there. There's an issue with these ears. They come off very easily. And if you were to look on a site like eBay, you would see that people were selling those ears for a lot of money because they were easily lost. So if you can find a Generation 1 Rat Bat that has those ears, make sure you guard them carefully because they're very small, easy to lose, and they do come off very easily. As a matter of fact, they'll probably come off when I'm transforming this guy. All right, let's move out. Now, I'm actually going to bring you in close here and let you see him from the various angles. He is a nice looking piece when displayed like this. And I'm going to try to turn him around without causing him to fall. And you see from the back, there's his radar slash booster rockets here. And he looks nice from the back. And I'm going to bring him and turn him back around to the front. And you see the radar right there behind his head. So yeah, it's not a bad looking piece. All right. Didn't have much of a part in the original series. He was in the movie, however. But uh, he was not in any of the episodes prior to the movie. But I am using him to review because he did have a memorable moment in the movie. Okay. Now we're going to transform him into cassette mode. The first thing you want to do is take off his booster rocket radar things in the back. And you can see an ear already fell to the side because those ears just are not that sturdy. And I might as well put the other one down. And he won't stand very well without them, so I'm going to lay him down. And here they are. These are silver. He came with silver ones. And some were packaged with gold ones as the um, cassettes often varied the color of their accessories later on with him in, for example, Eject and Rewind. All right, now we'll transform him. You're going to put these little claws down in, and they slide right in there. You're going to snap his wings up once like this, bring his feet in. Now his head comes in. Nope, there goes an ear. This one surprisingly stayed on. Okay, and you're going to bring 
this in then closer to here bring this ear over and it clips in and there you go now we'll put this other ear back in and they're pretty easy to put back in they do have little holes here that go into little pegs inside but like I said there's substantial gap that they can come off okay once again got away from me so you can see how frustrating that can be and that's a huge con okay so here's Ratbat in cassette mode I really like the color of him in cassette mode and I'll tell you why when you put him in Soundwave's chest he looks fantastic he's my favorite cassette I always keep him and well he's my favorite cassette to keep in Soundwave's chest so if you have a generation sound one Soundwave put Ratbat in because he's a really nice shade of purple and it goes well with Soundwave's blue so you have a nice Decepticon dark blue purple look going on and he actually does a nice job accenting um, your generation one Soundwave so once again I'll bring the cassette in that's what it looks like from the front and from the back and you see the Decepticon rub symbol there that otherwise will be on Ratbat's face or on Ratbat's chest. Um, you can also put one of these in one of those aftermarket uh, cassette tape carriers. They're clear plastic. You can see that in my Soundwave review and uh, he fits nicely in there or in Soundwave's chest. Okay. I hope you enjoyed my review of Generation 1 Ratbat. Please stay tuned for my final thoughts and the pros and the cons that I gave to this action figure. Okay, it's time for the final thoughts on the Generation 1 Ratbat toy. As far as pros go, I'd say that Ratbat looks enough like the Generation 1 cartoon to make me happy. Um, anytime you've got the toy that looks like the cartoon and vice versa, uh, that's definitely a pro with any action figure review. And um, I think with Ratbat, they did a good enough job. Um, I also like that Ratbat looks excellent in Soundwave's chest. When Ratbat is in tape cassette mode, he looks really good transformed and placed into Soundwave's chest. The reason is because Ratbat has a nice purple color and it goes really nice with Soundwave's blue color. It looks very Decepticon-like and it will really enhance the look of your Soundwave action figure if you have a Generation 1 Soundwave. That's actually how I display my Ratbat. I constantly keep him changed in um, to cassette form and placed securely in Soundwave's chest and that helps so his ears don't get lost either. Which leads me to my cons. Uh, Ratbat's ears constantly fall off in both forms either Ratbat robot form or in cassette form. It doesn't matter if you just opened your rat bat fresh out of the box and it was in mint condition from 1980 whatever five six um, his ears are gonna fall off within like a couple days uh, those ears go for a lot of money on eBay you could probably sell his ears separately for more than you could sell a complete rat bat for um, but seriously uh, the ears are a problem and um, they do fall off I'm very lucky that the one that I have that I re just reviewed does have both of his ears um, my other con is that Ratbat is based off the worst generation character ever okay and there's a lot of bad generation one characters but like they all had some redeeming quality about them Ratbat really had none I mean come on I mean Huffer is, is cooler than Ratbat um, any of those guys uh, Swerve is cooler. Pipes is cooler. I'm trying to think of some really bad ones, you know, but the, it, like what I'm saying is he's just a bad character. They did nothing to develop his character. So what you got was just a bad toy based on a bad character. And finally, honestly, this toy is worthless if you, without Soundwave. If you don't have a Soundwave to display Ratbat in, he just looks like garbage transformed into Ratbat, you know. Uh, it, and it's not fun to play with because what did he really do in the in the uh, cartoon? I guess in the movie he like attacked um, Perceptor's head for like three seconds. So that was his big moment in the animated movie from the 80s. So, well, that's it. That's my review on Generation 1 uh, Ratbat. I hope you liked it.
If you did, you can leave a comment. If you didn't, you can leave a comment. I like comments. Um, you could also become my friend on YouTube. I like friends. Or you could even subscribe to my channel, which makes me really happy. And that way you can check back to check on my awesome reviews that I do. I do try to do two a day, five days a week. So that's like 10 reviews a week. What other YouTube channel supplies you with that much quality in such a short period of time? All right. I'll talk to you guys later.